I was uh, thoroughly impressed with Street Trash. I, I got to be honest with you, man. This was uh, a film that when it first got announced, I was unfamiliar with the original. And uh, it was my co-host, Luke, who actually was a pretty big fan of it. And so he was like kind of encouraging me to try to sit down and watch it. I never ended up doing that until after I saw yours. So it was kind of a, a okay. reverse experience for me. But oh, I got to say, it, yours for a modern audience, uh, like I, I was really, really impressed with kind of what you were able to do as far as bringing that into like a modern day sense, but also staying true to the similar, you know, guts, gore, obviously all that stuff that we have. But just the same tones, the same messaging and everything. I, I was really impressed with that. So I wanted to know how much of a fan of Street Trash were you before you got on the project? Or was this something that was just offered to you and you said, I'm going for it? Yeah, the, the film was uh, the film was offered to me, but I knew what Street Trash was. I was a fan uh, of the original Street Trash with many other 80s uh, films. Um, so when Justin and Matt approached me to to do it, the producers from uh, Joe Bob's Last Drive-In, straight away I was like, yeah, that would be cool. But straight away I was like, oh, you know, I want to make it more of a more of a sequel, and you know, just have it's important to get that DNA from the original, but do my own thing, you know, do mm -hmm. complete my own thing, and rather make it as a as a sequel. Uh, obviously we have to have homeless people in there. That's a big part of the original. We have to have the prosthetics. Obviously that's a major part. Have to have the uh, multicolored goo. Um, so yeah, it's about ticking, ticking those boxes, but, you know, bringing it to a new audience, a uh, modern audience, but still have that 80s cool like feel to it. And uh, it was great because we also shot on 35. So that just helped like a little bit more. And yeah, and when it comes to the soundtrack or... Again, having a good, strong narrative story and characters that you enjoy and go on this journey with that. Because at the same time, there's, a, there's there's also a lot of heart in this movie as well, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I highlighted that in my review. I love the camaraderie amongst our main cast there. I think like everybody in it uh, really works for me, especially the character of Chef. I mean, I just was in love with him the moment he popped up on screen. And yeah, just he's, starts, he's uh, my favorite character. He's, he's my favorite character. I know. And it, it's just such a fun, uh, such a fun, unique take to where it's like he's kind of this uh, someone I wouldn't expect to almost be like our, our, our group leader in a sense, kind of have this more not like authority, but just like kind of this fatherly like approach to everybody. It was it was very heartwarming. And I think that's yeah. a huge, huge step up from the original. I know I might get pushed back from some diehard fans. But like I, 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 love... I actually, I actually had a lot of the uh, original fans that uh, love the original, uh, but actually liked this more than the original, which was Hell yeah. very, very, very surprising. And and they grew up with the original, uh, but they still love the original. But they just they they either preferred mine or all the 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 fans were like, we love it just as much. And it's great that you didn't copy. And it's great that it's more of a sequel. It's great that we have another, you know, another street trash follow up of some sort, you know? Absolutely. And uh, where I was kind of going with that was just like when it comes to approaching this more as a sequel and not a remake, which I feel like a remake is kind of where maybe a lot of studios would want to take a property like this. That's a little bit yeah. more underground, I guess you would say. Uh, what kind of swayed you into doing that? What kind of made that the approach for you? Was it your decision or was that something that when it was approached to you, it was like, you have to do a sequel? Uh, no, I wanted, I wanted to do the, uh, to, to make it a sequel. Um, it was just, it's just one of those things. Um, you know, I want to do my work. I, I want to do my work and have my stamp on something. You know what I mean? So for me, it was very important that I, uh, you know, that I, write the come up with the story that I want to make and um obviously uh the producers had to approve that but at the same time it's just you know you, I, I, as a writer you know like obviously I want to direct my own stuff that I write but it was important just to you know you know how it is dude when when there's a sequel uh sorry when there's a remake you're always like why why are they fucking doing this and all this so it's the the cool thing with the film with the original fans it's a sequel for a new uh, audience that knows fuck all about the original street trash. It's a standalone film and it works 
but you know it works both ways it doesn't it doesn't really matter so for a new audience it is it can be a standalone film but what's nice about it is when they find out that it's a sequel then they they'll go they'll rediscover the the old film which is awesome and it's it's the same with me if somebody hasn't seen Fry Barry, they'll uh, watch this and then go watch Fry Barry. So it's a win-win situation for everybody, which is cool. Yeah, and that was another thing I complimented highly as well, was just like, it seems like there's so much connective tissue between this and of course, Fried Barry when it comes to not yeah, just the, you know, the the way of your style, it's more just like the world and everything that we're kind of presented into. It, it all just feels like you're kind of... Uh, almost tarantino in your own universe here with these kind of uh, mm. off the wall very strange ideas what um when it comes to your writing process when it comes to kind of coming up with um these ideas i know this had an established property attached to it but to kind of dive into something like a fried berry where does that kind of start for you what is it that kind of gets you going as far as just like this is an out there concept now i'm just going to run with it yeah, so I mean, yeah, I, I guess it's just a process. So I think the first thing that I came up with was the whole dystopian, you know, dystopian future. Uh, one, it had to be set in South Africa, Cape Town. I didn't want to do a whole American thing. I, w I wanted to show off South Africa. I wanted to show off what we have here. And and also, I think that also makes it a little bit more unique and a little more different because we a lot of people around the world haven't seen a lot of stuff in South Africa. So that was important for me. And then, yeah, I, I think it's it's just that a process of the, the biggest thing first, I guess, is like, first, I love characters. I love, uh, you know, I love writing for characters and I love uh, dialogue. But the first thing is the story. Get the story down. I know it's going to be the government. I know that they're going to be against the homeless. And that's already like a solid story where you've got the you've got the rich you've got the government you've got the poor which is the homeless you've got no middle class and then you can have your five five or six uh misfit uh homeless guys they're all like drug addicts but like cool guys and they're the good guys and uh and you know and then they try and uh you know try and save the day and uh, take over the government uh, because they're trying to get rid of them and so yeah so when it comes to as soon as you've got the story, then then you can have fun. Then you can have fun, and then you can, you know, I can write these different characters. Um, so each, you know, everybody that watches it, there's a character for everybody. You know what I mean? It's it's each character is very different. Like you, you've got the fatherly figure, or you know, you've got the the comic relief guys. You've got the weird Gary, uh, you know, <laughs> two bit and Sockle. So yeah, it's there for everybody. And then the Sockle thing came came by because. I just thought it was a great um, support boat for for Gary because Gary's not a trained actor, so it was it was easier for me to work with Gary because of the the two bit thing. And on top of that, it was still very eighties. You know, obviously, there's no. I think some people might watch if if they don't know about it and they haven't watched the film yet, and they do know about the original Street Trash, and if they see like an image of Sockle, they'll be like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> what the fuck is this blue fucking alien? That wasn't in the original. So it's stuff like that, but it works. It works in that in, in that world. You know, I didn't overdo it. It was just, he was in there enough for it to work. And it was enough that it's, you know, it's his imaginary friend. And it was super 80s, this prosthetic puppet. So it, it was, again, I played homage to like 80s movies and stuff like that. So yeah, it just, it was a lot of fun you know, writing uh, those characters. And obviously, when it comes to stuff like this, I'm sure you have a lot more original projects you'd like to tackle. But this is a concept that I think Street Trash was pretty much primed for having kind of a cult following um, a lot of people who knew about it. But then there's a ton of people who don't. And so like getting this kind of a sequel treatment all these years later just makes perfect sense. And you hear that a lot from people in like the commentary space who are just like, if you're going to remake horror films or if you're going to kind of continue the universe, you should look at films that didn't quite work or weren't a mass appeal and try to figure yeah. out what's next. Is there another property that you'd love to, you know, take a stab at? Is there something that you're really passionate about that you think I have an idea, I have a story, I have a voice that I want to bring to the table for this? Uh, we have a script and a, yeah, we've been approached and have a script and we're just going to see, uh what happens there but it's um um 
I don't know if I can say it now. I'm trying to think. <laughs> uh, it's it's it, it, it's 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 in the works, and uh, and we have a story. Um, uh, the producers have the rights for it, and uh, it's Frank and Hooker. Uh, the early right. early, uh, you know, I think it's I think 1990. I think it was early 90s, late mm-hmm. late late 80s. Um, so there's a really cool concept. Uh, for that that I have that I would love uh that I would love to do um again bringing it making a difference and stuff like that but uh but yeah we'll see uh, you know, the th- the biggest thing is I love all genres I really do uh, I, I do like the dark and edgy stuff uh, a lot but uh, at the same time I, I don't want to get stuck in certain boxes I'd love to do fry Barry too but at the same time uh, it has to be right and any script has to be right for me to want to do it Otherwise, I'd rather just do something else. So it really all depends. And at the same time, I have been working on um, another another film every now and then that I've shot, which is completely different than Street Trash or, and Fry Barry. It's another film with Gary Green, and it's very underground, black and white, um, um, art house uh, uh, movie. It's like completely different. But um, yeah, I've been making that, and I've only got like four days left of shooting of that. And yeah, we'll see what happens with that. That's awesome. And I, I love that, you know, you've continued to uh, use a lot of the same actors and a lot of the same people uh, from project to project here. I think that that's super important. And you hear all the best uh, filmmakers, directors having this kind of, you know, uh, group that they come back to and everything. It's, ma- it's, ma- it's making movies with your friends. It's yeah. making movies with your friends. It's they're not just cast because they're my friends. They're cast because they are very good at what they do. I, I admire their work. I love their work, and that's why. I mean, Gary's a good friend of mine. All all, all, all the people are. Uh, Sean Cameron Michael as uh, Ronald. He's uh, one of my best friends. So it's yeah, it's one of those where making movies with your friends and stuff is is awesome. Like you, ha- having, you're just going to have so much fun on set, you know, and there's that trust between uh, both of us. And I, you know, I really love street trash and the way it turned out. Um, I'm very happy with it. And yeah, it's, it's one of those things where it's, it's not just my work. It's my, it's all these amazing actors, uh, the amazing DP, the, the music, the wardrobe, all these people are great at what they do. It's, uh, it's a very collaborative uh, thing and it's, you know, it's about all these people coming together to make what's in that frame. And I can't do it without any any of those very talented people, you know. That's awesome. And, and you know, I think that uh, what I was getting at with that question, more or less, was just like going forward. I think like, it, is it something that you plan to kind of keep them going? Say, even if you went into more of like, say, a dramatic film or something, it's like you want to keep this kind of filmmaking family together. Do you kind of approach each project with kind of uh, looking at a script or writing a script as like, well, even if they're not the main cast or they're not the main role, I know that Gary would be perfect for this. I know that Sean would be perfect. Yeah, absolutely. For this. And that's why I say like Gary will, no matter what film I do, Gary, Gary will end up popping up somewhere. You know what I mean? Right. He'll, he'll end up popping up somewhere. And then there's other films that I've got that, uh, uh, very possible uh be shooting uh early next year and it's just completely different it's a it's a you know very different than street trash uh still very dark still in the horror thing but w- like just a more of a darker re- more realistic tone um but yeah and it's again with uh actors um that i work with all the time but yeah you'll have to wait and see absolutely and uh not to keep going too much deeper obviously the frank and hooker thing is super cool that's awesome to hear but when it comes to just like your original kind of writings and things like that i'm always curious to ask people because my co-host and i are trying to get our feet wet in the film industry at some point here we want to do things one of the creatures we absolutely want to tackle one day we're going to do it is uh a werewolf like a werewolf film of some kind is there like a concept whether it be a creature an event um a subject matter whether it's horror or not that you absolutely feel like you won't be complete as an artist until you've done it until you've told that story uh i have um i have a a, uh i have a script that i've had for an idea and I've, yeah, I've, I've got like two folders full of full of stuff that there's a film that I've wanted to make for the longest time and I still haven't seen it. 
and it is a very very fucking dark film um it has horror elements in it and stuff so it's not too much of like you know it's, whether it's like a werewolf or something like that but I, as you said as an artist of something that you know it's a film there that i have to make and it's about getting the right budget and the right people on board um uh, it's a time travel movie but it's very it's very very different than anything that i've ever seen out there and i've had it now for 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 like many many years and i still haven't seen it so i still really really want to make it because i know it's very different and nobody's done it so yeah that's awesome yeah no i'm always curious because i think like seeing people like robert eggers who got to come out recently and and finally make nosferatu which we'll be seeing yeah. later this year it's like it's that's something i feel like every filmmaker strives for is they have that one concept that one idea that one thing they want to tackle and hopefully they get to one day it, it's something where it's like they can bring their voice to it and i think that your voice is so fresh and so unique that like i would hate to live in a world where i don't get to see the ryan kruger time travel film so uh, that, that's something man. i'll definitely one keep day. in mind there we'll do it well, if anybody's listening, give me some money so I can fucking make it. <laughs> there we go. Absolutely. I'll send it around. I'll, I'll do my best for you. Um, Final, final question here. Uh, when it comes to all these practical effects, getting into all the gooey, icky business, what was your favorite thing that you guys got to do on set with them? What was your favorite effect, your favorite scene to shoot with all of the, you know, sticky green and blue and yellow stuff? Um, uh, It was probably, I think... There was so, there was so many there was there was so many things that was so much fun. I mean, there was a lot of, I think the dumpster, the homeless dumpster guy, where he snaps his leg and his arm snaps off, and then his face his face melts off, and and you know his back comes out. I, I I really dig that. But then again, the one eye woman, um, the way it melts and it goes into the skull. I mean, I love that image. It's just like super super fucking eighties with the you know the mouth mm -hmm. open. And then stuff like that. But the, there were so many scenes in the movie that were, everything was fun to shoot, like everything. And it's a, it's such a process. It just takes time to, you know, we, you know, we're shooting two 35 millimeter cameras, whether it's a concentrating on the neck for one shot, whether it's concentrating on the foot for one shot. And it's a process and it just takes time. And sometimes you've got to re reshoot it, reset it. And it, sometimes it takes an hour to reset. And then you've got to, do it again to get it right. And sometimes there's mistakes where an extra thing comes out or whatever. And you're like, oh yeah, cool. Amazing. So yeah. So it's a lot of fun. Heck yeah. Awesome, Ryan. Well, that's going to get us down to about the last minute of our time here, man. So I appreciate you sitting down with me. This was seriously a pleasure to get to talk to you. Uh, uh, I'm really looking much. forward to seeing some of the future projects. I hope that we can kind of uh, speak again, especially when like Frank and Hooker and that uh, time travel movie come out. Cool, man. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me, man. Do the horse shit, gonna do it live. Press splatter, cast, kick it. Every day they lie. Bad ass, bad ass, bad ass, bad ass, bad ass.